Hello, and thank you for joining us today. South Asia, a population of 2 billion people, but accounts for two-fifths of the world's poor. To be fair, it has seen high growth. It's lifted millions out of poverty, but the trend has been uneven and at risk of being reversed by the pandemic. We also have surging debt, surging inflation. Sri Lanka just defaulted. Pakistan, some say, may be at risk. Add to that, we also have a record heat wave, a sign of what's to come for a region that's very vulnerable to climate change. So what can be done? How do you mitigate all the challenges? What collective framework, policies, measures can be adopted to benefit from collective prosperity for a region that's traditionally been the least integrated in the world. I'm privileged to introduce to you Hari S. Bartia, Jubilin Bartia Group, founder and co-chairman, International Business Council. Rajan Ananda, Sequoia Capital, India Managing Director. Hina Ravini Kar, Minister, I apologize. Pakistan Minister of State for Foreign Affairs. Salman F. Rahman, Bangladesh Private Industry and Investment Advisor to the Prime Minister. First of all, I want to start with how to build a sustainable economy. Um, Minister Salman Rahman, I want to start with you because Bangladesh at one point was called a basket case by an aide of Henry Kissinger. But it's seen tremendous growth over the course of 30 years, including during the pandemic when you saw 6% growth. Initially, it was about FDI going into your garments industry, but you've since done a lot better. You're going into power. Uh, you're going into agri. Talk to us about the key takeaway that the rest of the South Asian nations can replicate. Thank you. Uh, actually, uh the real growth which has taken place in Bangladesh has been this last uh, 15 years, 14 to 15 years. Uh, that's when uh, our Prime Minister, Sheikh Hasina, came to power for the second time. And she's been in power for, uh, she's been re-elected uh, for two terms. And uh, what actually, I think the main key uh, success of uh, Bangladesh the success story has been political stability. That we have, that has been the most important, uh, I think, uh, factor for our success. The other thing was that uh, when uh, Prime Minister Hasina came to power initially, uh, we were uh, in a very, very bad state as far as electricity was concerned. We were uh, generating only 4,000 megawatt. And today we are generating something like nearly 25,000 megawatt. So, you know, she really put a lot of emphasis on electricity. Uh, three weeks ago, uh, we achieved another milestone. Every single household in uh, Bangladesh today has electricity. And uh, then, the, uh, of course, as you mentioned rightly, the, our garment, uh, uh, and, uh, and not only garment, textile. You see, we started with garment, but then we went into backward linkage. And today, uh, we have, um, there are many companies which are completely vertical. So we start with a bale of cotton and we end up with a shirt. So that the textile industry, huge investment went into it. And it wasn't all FDI. There was some FDI, but it was mostly domestic investment uh, which actually let this uh, growth go up. The other thing which was really, I think, you know, Bangladesh is the most uh, densely populated country in the world. It's 170 million people size, Switzerland size. So imagine if you put 170 million people into Switzerland, what would happen? But we are self-sufficient in food, nearly self-sufficient in food. So our agriculture, agriculture sector has been a tremendous success. We are the fourth largest producer of rice in the world. We are self-sufficient in rice. We are uh, the third largest producer of vegetables in the world. Uh, we are the third largest producer of uh, river uh, sweetwater fish. We are self-sufficient in poultry. We are mm. self-sufficient mm. in egg, milk, all of this. So agriculture has really been a very, very successful. Even though we are a very small country, we don't have land, but in spite of that. So 
this was basically, and the other thing which in the pandemic we have been successful and the reason why, the other thing which we did was because we are a small country, our digital, you know, Prime Minister went for digital Bangladesh and we laid a fiber optic backbone up to the village level. So because of that, uh, our IT sector has really, you know, we are, produ we are giving 4G connections at very low price and our connectivity is very good. We are now going into 5G. Mm -hmm. So we have these freelancers. We have over 650,000 freelancers, young men and women who live in the, from their own villages. They are able to you know, go access the international marketplace. So the, all of these have actually, and then of course women empowerment. That has been really the major success story. And it started with the garment industry because it, that's when the women started working in the right. garment industry. And that, that actually, because 50% of the population are women. And if you em, empowering the women is actually what takes, moves the economy forward and that's what we've actually seen as happening.